between the two and they split little do they know that she is expecting or let me give you another scenario very common she thinks that this boy is going to take care of her he is going to be the love of her life so she goes without the consent of her family she tells her family her family say no this person is not good for you she says, no, he is good for me. She disregards her family. She goes off with that boy. And even if they get a nikah done by some imam who doesn't understand what's going on, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, any woman who gets married without the consent of her guardian, if she does so without the permission of her father, her nikah is not valid, her nikah is invalid, her nikah is invalid, it doesn't count. أيها امرأة نكحت بغير ابن وليها فلكاحها باطل فلكاحها باطل فلكاحها باطل. The boys know how to manipulate girls. It's so clear for them step by step instructions on the internet for them, and they all know where to get it. And they know better than any one of us. They know how to manipulate women. Look at the Sharia. Look at Allah's commandments. He looked after the woman. He said, O oh women, I know you are weak, I created you. So I have put someone in charge who will only look for your good interest, your father. He does not want anything, rather he wants you to be better than him. And your mother wants you to be better than her. There is no other relationship in this world where you want the other person to be better than you except this relationship between parent and child. Allah said your father will look after you in this affair. He understands men and you do not understand men. Allah knows that it is easy for men to manipulate women. So he put a guardian in place to protect their honor, their dignity. What happens to this girl? She goes off with this boy, he gets what he wants from her. The physical relationship. So many different illnesses, why? Because of this type of relationship. And now she's stuck. She disobeyed her family, she's lost her family. She went into this relationship and she's stuck. The boy abandons her. There's no good in this. There's no good in this whatsoever. And it can be far worse. What do we see in our schools? Parents, we need to understand what our children are going through. We need to understand what's going in, on in the school, which is completely haram, and they all know about it. At year five, they show our children a film where they educate them about relationships, SRE curriculum, a documentary or a film created by Channel 4, the education department. They show them explicit material. In a cartoon nature, the physical act between a man and a wife. Or it's meant to be between a man and a wife only. They show them that. This is age 9 or 10. The end of year 5. In primary school. They show them the actual birth. Focusing on the private parts, explicit. Throughout this film, they show them and promote boyfriends and girlfriends. All of this, our children are exposed to. Let alone what they see at secondary age. In a secondary school, we know, parents, we need to understand what our children are going through. Their friends are sending pictures of girls amongst themselves and explicit pictures of private parts. This is going around in all the schools. Don't think the Muslims are not involved. I have so many friends who are teachers, this is going involved. The kids here, they understand, they know. 
They're not. All of this, looking at any of this, keeping quiet when this is passed around, this is all haram. If you don't stand up and be a Muslim, stand up and say to whoever's doing this, get rid of it. I don't want to see it. I am not like you. I'm a Muslim. I fear Allah. I understand that these things are there for marriage. Nothing else. In marriage, this is good. Outside of marriage, this is evil. If we don't stand up and say we are Muslims, we don't behave like this. Our values are different. We still have our honor, we have our dignity. My brothers, my young brothers, conversations on the internet, social media. If you're talking to the opposite gender on the internet, it's as if you're one to one with that person. Or near enough to say, what does Islam say? How do we behave with our sisters? How should we behave towards them? The Prophet said, every one of you is a guardian and every one of you is responsible for his flock. Our children are our flock. We give them smartphones so they can chat to anyone they want. They can take pictures and send them around. Is this taking care of your flock? And we are so scared to take that smartphone away from them. This is not good parenting. <coughs> Children, if your parent takes your phone away from you, it is only because they love you. Only for good. They want to protect you from certain things and they have every right. Whatever society tells you, they are the ones who love you more than anyone else. These other people who are telling you you have this right and that right, they have no care for you. They want you to fall into the humiliation that we see around us of society. You have these desires and every single one of us in this room had those desires. We go through the stage of life, Allah is testing us. Allah also warns us. This is part and parcel of life. There are people who make the wrong choice. They decide a few moments of pleasure looking at something that are not allowed to look at, talking to someone that they shouldn't be talking to, using words that they're not allowed to use. They think it's fun. They think it's pleasurable. They give preference to this pleasure over an everlasting pleasure. What an imbecile. That's how Allah describes them. He does it. He knows it's haram. Then, as for the one who remembered, I'm going to stand in front of Allah. Allah can see me even though no one else can see me. Allah knows what I'm doing. There's no escape. What does he do? He says no to his own desires. He controls himself. An honorable person, a righteous person, a good person, a person of strength. To say no to what everyone else is doing and say, I'm a Muslim. I love Allah and His Messenger. That takes a lot of courage. Everyone can be one of the sheep. But this person is a leader. He is what Allah wants him to be. Someone special. He says no. Allah has prepared for him beauty in Jannah of every kind. Because you deprived and controlled yourself in this world. That's the reality that is hidden from you. My dear brothers, when we speak to the opposite gender, it must be formal. It must be for only good purposes. If you feel emotions within you, get away from that situation. That is the best for you. Talk to your parents. Talk to your children about what they heard because they are getting the wrong information from their friends and every other media outlet out there. So if they don't get the good from you, they're not going to get it from anywhere. It is meant for a wholesome, good purpose. In fact, if desires were eradicated from the human being, you see this person become weak. You see this person not wanting to do things. It is there for a good purpose. But it must be controlled. Now our children, they go to schools. And they are being told that you should have relationships with the opposite gender. Boyfriend and girlfriend are something they say are normal. What did Allah say? 
None of you is alone with the opposite gender. One on one, except that shaitan is the third amongst them. What does he want to do? He wants to disgrace that woman and he wants to disgrace that man. If they are alone. You will not hear this message anywhere other than from those who have been given this responsibility. That means every parent. The relationships outside of marriage are all forbidden by Allah. Only lead to evil end. The Prophet said, I have not left a trial greater and more intense upon the men than women. The Prophet mentioned, and perhaps it's the society that we are living in, that he did not see Sinthani min ahlin nar. The Prophet's eyes were protected from them. Women who are dressed, yet they are undressed, they are naked. They move in a way that entices desires, calling people to that which Allah has forbidden, doing things and enticing desires to cause haram. The Prophet never saw them. His eyes were protected from them. Does this not sound like the people that we see out there? Rather, if they were walking around without any clothes on, they would not look as good as they do with these clothing. It is to entice desires. This is what Shaitan wants. What does Allah want? He controls himself. An honorable person, a righteous person, a good person, a person of strength. To say no to what everyone else is doing and say, I'm a Muslim. May Allah protect us all. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alam.